Everyone's ready? Yes, sir. Welcome to the Cathedral of St. John Berkman's. My name is Father Peter Mangum. I'm the rector of the cathedral. This cathedral is the only cathedral in the world that has St. John as a patron. There are many cathedrals worldwide, but St. John Berkman's has a special place in the life of our state in as much as a miracle took place here almost 150 years ago to this day. And so we're about to have a big celebration of that miracle. And one of the ways in which we're highlighting this miracle in our state is by having the heart, literally the physical heart of St. John Berkman's come here to this cathedral. St. John was a young saint from northern modern day Belgium. He was born in 1599, died in 1621. He lived such a very good holy life all the way from uh, childhood until his early death at age 22. In fact, uh, we can all think in terms of Mother Teresa. Everyone knew Mother Teresa to be a walking, living saint. Well, everyone knew St. John Berkman's to be a walking, living saint. They would come and watch him serve at Mass, for example. They, would, they wanted to see him serve. They, they thought, wow, look at this angelic uh, young man. And for many people, it in turn helped them want to live good, holy lives. He wanted to be a Jesuit priest. The Jesuits, when they came to Shreveport, built this church. First they built another one. This is their second church. And the stained glass windows are all related to St. John Berkman's. The statue directly behind me in the center part of the white uh, main altar is of St. John Berkman's. And so his heart is coming here and it is leaving Belgium for the first time in 395 years. This is a big to-do. The Vatican is very much aware of what we are doing here in Shreveport, Louisiana. One of the cardinals of the church, he's an American cardinal, but he lives in the Vatican, will be here specifically because of, of this great occasion to have the heart of a saint here. Now, St. John Berkman's, when he died, there was a, po a post-mortem examination and they literally took his heart out. He died in the city of Rome. He's from, as I said, modern day Belgium. And back then, 1621, you can't just transport the body all the way across the Alps in order to, for a person to be buried. So what they did was they buried him there in Rome where he died. But as a part of the post-mortem examination, they literally took his heart out. And one of the priests, a Flemish priest, wanted to take the heart back to the people of Belgium because they were distraught that here their young saint had died, way too young. And so it was a 75-day journey to go from Rome all the way up to Belgium, and they stopped at a lot of the different Jesuit houses there, and the Jesuit priests venerated this heart. They saw the heart, but not, not as that organ that pumps blood through the body, but the, the place where one encounters God, where one prays to God, um, the, the seat of one's soul. So St. John Berkman's died in the 17th century. This was also the same century in which the Sacred Heart devotion began. And so there, again, you have that connection to the heart, the understanding of a heart as, as that place of encounter with God. The Sisters of Grand Coteau, Louisiana, where the miracle took place, they are the Sisters of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And so all of this kind of comes together and hopefully gives us a better understanding and appreciation for the fact that a physical heart could make a trip from Rome to Belgium, stay there for 395 years, and now for the first time ever, leave. And quite literally, when I say leave, it's in a beautiful reliquary. In fact, you can see here on this poster in front here a sense of the reliquary. It, uh, the, the reliquary itself is 18 inches tall. It's a beautiful reliquary. It's been in the reliquary since the 1800s. And it will come here. We commissioned a special suitcase to be made so that it will be placed into it and will be super safe, protected for the journey from 
Belgium to here. It, it'll be on an airplane. Obviously, a priest from Belgium will be carrying the, the heart through customs until it finally arrives here. We have a number of guest speakers who are coming here from around the United States, authors, uh, professors, uh, even a comic strip artist. Someone who did a comic strip all about the life, death, and miracles of St. John Berkman's will be here. It's a, it's a fascinating uh, new uh, a book, comic strip. He will bring it here. Uh, he will debut it here. This author has a personal devotion to, to St. John Berkman's. He's been here. Um, he, well, he was born and raised in Louisiana. He's married, four kids, and... Uh, South Carolina, but he'll be able to teach everyone by means of artwork um, uh, all about the virtues, the holy life of our patron saint. Now the miracle that took place in Grand Coteau, 150 years, here was a young woman who wanted to become a sister. St. John Berkman's was a young man. He wanted to become a priest. He died too young. Here she was about to die too young. and. St. John, who had been beatified one step before canonization, he had been beatified in 1865. Well, all of these sisters wanted to have this, um, wanted to pray through the intercession of this newly beatified John Berkman's, asking for his intercession to help her be cured. Of course, it's not by the power of St. John Berkman's that, that she was cured, but through his intercession, on the ninth day of a novena, when she was in her, what they thought, deathbed, she hadn't eaten in weeks, very difficult to even take water. Her tongue was so swollen. Uh, the doctors of Opelousa said she's at the point of death. On that ninth day, the sisters were there in chapel, presuming that when they left the chapel to go into the uh, infirmary where she was, presuming that she would be dead. Quite the contrary. She had had a vision, quite literally an apparition, which the Vatican has approved. It's the only Vatican-approved apparition to have happened in the United States of America. And it happened here with John Berkman's. And he also touched her mouth. And she was quite literally, completely, spontaneously uh, cured. Not just cured, but here's a woman who had been uh, bedridden for so long, she was able to get up out of bed. She was hungry. When she saw Mother Superior, she said she was hungry. She wanted to get back to her regular duties. She wanted to take the veil. She wanted to, to finish her process of becoming a nun. And, um, and then she gave a complete description of what took place that particular day. The apparition, the, the miracle, and all of that is archived now in, in uh, the archives of the Archdiocese of New Orleans. And many of those items are coming up here to Shreveport to be part of the exhibition. We will also have the, the missal, the big book that Pope Leo XIII used for the canonization ceremony. It too will be here uh, for us to see, and I will actually use it at one of the Latin masses. We will have another 167 relics of saints that will be present here so that people will be able to walk and see relics of many of the different saints. All of this will be a way in which we hopefully will once again come to know about the, the life, the miracles of St. John Berkman's, not just so that we have a good history lesson, but that it will help us in turn really do our best to imitate his holiness of life, his desire to live a good, virtuous life. So on December 8th, that will be the very first day that the heart will be present here in the cathedral. December 8th, there are four masses. Our schools will be present at two of those masses. And we'll have a number of uh, other liturgies taking place. And so from the 8th to the 18th, we will have the heart here, except for one day, December 14th. That's the actual 150th anniversary of the miracle. So we will take the heart in procession down to Grand Coteau 
the student body will be there ready for a special mass. The Bishop of Lafayette will be there. Other guests will be there as well uh, as we will take his heart into the old infirmary, now the shrine of St. John Berkman's, and it will be there for the people of South Louisiana to be able to venerate. Uh, in fact, we've already had a press conference down there and the people of South Louisiana are very excited about the fact that their, one of their beloved saints heart will be at Grand Coteau for, uh, for this anniversary miracle. So I hope I've been able to kind of give you a sense of what's going on. On December 18th, the Cardinal will be here. We have a special mass. He will be able to preside from the bishop's chair and he will be here. He's coming from the Vatican to be here and the original plans was he was going to go back, but in other words, he was willing just to come just for that. But now he'll be staying in the United States for a little while longer. And we look forward to being able to have one of the cardinals of the church here in our cathedral. It's a rare day. In fact, we can only think of two other cardinals who have been here in our state, uh, in, in the state's history.